Here's the mathematical definition of the distributive property. A times B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C. Think about the word distributive. A related word is distribute, or to hand something out or give something out. So what this is describing is that A has been handed out to the rest of the terms that are in that expression. Looking at this in a way that's a little bit less abstract, let's consider 2 times 3 plus 4 and see if that really is equal to 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4, where the 2 has been handed out to both terms in the parentheses. The order of operations tells us that we need to do what's in parentheses before we multiply. So here we get 2 times 7, which is 14. Over here, we have 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 2 times 4, which is 8. And when we add those together, we get a 14. These two things are equal. In some sense, um, the distributive property is a loophole to the order of operations. Order of operations tells us we have to do what's in parentheses first. But the distributive property tells us there is a different way to do certain problems. Now sometimes I'm asked, why would we ever want to do this? It seems so much easier to add these numbers first and then multiply than to multiply each of them separately and then have to add them together. Well, one of the reasons we do this is because once you start working with variables, let's say you have 2 times x plus 3, the things that you have in parentheses are not like terms. So you can't go by the order of operations and add those first. But that doesn't mean that you're stuck and can't do anything. You can use the distributive property, which often people denote by using arrows, and say that this is 2 times x plus 2 times 3, which is 6. And that gives us a more simplified expression. The distributive property also works for longer expressions. Um, let's say we have a times b plus c plus d minus e. It can work for addition as well as subtraction inside the parentheses, and we can have as many or as few terms as we would like in here. So this would be equal to ab plus ac plus ad minus a e. There are times when you might be tempted to use the distributive property because something looks like it fits this category when really it doesn't. Um, and this isn't a matter of memorizing when you can use it and when you can't. You can actually check and see if it works or not. Um, one of the most common areas where mistakes are made is if we have, let's say, 3 plus 4 squared. I'm going to put a big question mark here because we are checking. Please note, I'm not saying that this is correct. Um, is that equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared? Can I distribute an exponent? Well, let's check. Let's see if they give us the same value. Um, 3 plus 4 is 7. Squared is 7 times 7, which is 49. If we try to distribute that exponent through and try to give it to each one of these, we'll see that we have 9 plus 16, and when we add those, we get 25. 49 is not equal to 25. You cannot distribute an exponent over addition. You can distribute multiplication over addition. So remember, the word distributive is related to the word distribute, which means to hand out. You can use this when you're multiplying a number or a variable by other terms that are inside parentheses, and all of those terms have to have pluses or minus between them. Before closing, let's do one more example of the distributive property. Let's say you have 10 times 5 plus 3 plus 1 half. Now you can use the order of operations and add 5 and 3 and a half, and then multiply that by 10, or the distributive property tells us we can distribute or hand out the 10 to each of these things on the inside first. 10 times 5 is 50. 10 times 3 is 30. 10 times 1 half is 5. And when we add these up, we get 85. So remember, the distributive property has to do with the word distribute or handing things out.
Remember, order of operations tells us we have to do what's in parentheses first. So the distributive property, in a sense, is like a legal loophole. By using it, it's kind of like you're getting away with something.